Hello friends, welcome to the integrated video sessions. In this discussion, we have Dr. Rajamendran sir, our surgery faculty and I am Dr. Khalil for your radiology. We will be integrating lot of topics of surgery and radiology going forward and I hope you enjoy this discussion. So to begin with, we have our first question today. The first question is, Mr. Kumar, a 30 year old male presents with epigastric pain and vomiting. The junior surgeon diagnosed this as a case of pancreatitis by doing serum amylase levels. Patient is getting worse on the fourth day of admission. The senior consultant ordered for a CECT abdomen. The image is given. Which of the following statement is wrong regarding this case? So let us look at the image that is given. So this is the contrast enhanced CT scan image that is obtained on the fourth day of admission. What do you think is this image showing you? So if you look at the image carefully, this is a contrast CT. You can see the contrast in the iota, the enhancement of the kidneys. So you know this is a contrast enhanced CT scan and axial image is shown. And this area here is the region of the pancreas. And look at the pancreas carefully. If you look at the pancreas carefully, you see there are some nicely enhancing areas. But at the same time, you also see some non-enhancing areas in the pancreas. So when you have such inhomogeneous pancreas with some enhancing and non-enhancing areas, think of necrotizing pancreatitis. And this is a very severe type of pancreatitis that develops and uh, you may have some extra complications when you have necrotizing pancreatitis. The reason we advise CECT after 72 hours is to look for such complications. Do not advise contrast CT in the first initial part of the admission because you know you would not be able to see these complications developing. So always advise on the after 72 hours as in the question given it was done on the fourth day of admission. So now let's try to understand how a normal pancreas appears. So if you see a normal pancreas, the normal pancreas would be a very homogeneously enhancing one with small micro clefts that you can see. The peripancreatic fat will not show any kind of inflammation, no peripancreatic fat stranding, no collections noted. So this is how a normal pancreas would appear on a CCT image. And look at these images now. So if you look at this image, you can see the same image which is showing this inhomogeneous enhancements. There are lack of areas which are not having the enhancement. There are some collections around the pancreas. And you can see there are some third space collections. In this image, you can see there is plural effusions also indicative of a more severe complications developing in pancreatitis. So when you see such kind of non-enhancing areas, peripancreatic fluid collections, you are having plural effusions, ascites, all of these suggest a severe type of pancreatitis. And uh, let us try to look at what are the different types of pancreatitis. We basically have two categorization of pancreatitis on the radiology. One is acute interstitial or the acute interstitial edematous pancreatitis where we have a homogeneous enhancement but the pancreas is slightly bulky. And if you see collections in cases of acute interstitial edematous pancreatitis which are less than 4 weeks without any kind of wall around it, this is called as acute peripancreatic fluid collections and these are usually seen within 4 weeks and they do not have any wall, there is no wall. This is acute peripancreatic fluid collections. And the moment we see a wall, a homogeneous collection in the extra pancreatic areas, in the peripancreatic areas with a homogeneous collection having a well-defined wall around it, developing usually after 4 weeks with a well-defined wall. What do you think is this? In a case of acute interstitial edematous pancreatitis, this is your pseudocyst. Okay? So these are your pseudocyst. But our case did not have a homogeneous enhancement, right? It was inhomogeneous, having some non-enhancing areas like this. So it had some non-enhancing areas like this. So our case was not a case of acute interstitial edematous pancreatitis, but it was a case of acute necrotizing pancreatitis. It is acute necrotizing pancreatitis. That is how I want you to differentiate between an edematous pancreatitis from a necrotizing pancreatitis. And in case of acute necrotizing pancreatitis, if you have a collection which is less than 4 weeks with no wall, this is acute necrotic collection. So the difference between uh, acute peripancreatic fluid collection and acute necrotic collection is just the type of pancreatitis we are dealing with. If we are dealing with a uh, acute interstitial edematous pancreatitis, we call it acute peripancreatic fluid collection. And if you are dealing with acute necrotizing pancreatitis, we call it acute necrotic collection. And if you have a collection which is seen after four weeks with a well-defined wall around it, but very inhomogeneous areas within, this is your Waldorf necrosis, Waldorf necrosis. 
So you call it pseudocyst when it is acute interstitial edematous pancreatitis and we call it Waldorf necrosis when you are dealing with a case of acute necrotizing pancreatitis. And to grade the severity of pancreatitis, we have what is called as a modified CT severity index. And in this modified CT severity index, we look at the pancreatic inflammation, the pancreatic necrosis and any extra pancreatic complications. And each of this is given a different score. If there is a normal pancreas, we score it as 0. If there is any pancreatic abnormality with peripancreatic fat involvement, there is inflammation of peripancreatic fat, we give it a score of 2. And if there are any peripancreatic fluid collections, we give it a score of 4. So, and this is talking about the pancreatic inflammation. And we will also see for any necrotic areas within the pancreas. If there are no necrotic areas, we give it a score of 0. And if you see areas of necrosis less than 30% of the involvement of the pancreas, we give it a score of 2. And if it is more than 30%, we give it a score of 4. And if you have any extra pancreatic complications, like you have kind of fluid effusion as we saw in our case, ascites, any vascular complications, any kind of parenchymal or gastrointestinal complications, sometimes bubble ischemia and perforations can also develop in pancreatitis, we give it a score of 2. And by summing up, the total score, if it comes between 0 to 2, you call it a mild case of pancreatitis and if the score is 4 to 6, it is moderate and a score of 8 to 10 is severe pancreatitis. And if you see what has happened, we had an acute necrotizing pancreatitis which was, you know, involving more than 30 percent. So, we could go for almost a score of 4 in our case. We had pancreatic inflammation, right, and peripancreatic fluid collections. We also had extra pancreatic complications. So, we were dealing with a severe type of pancreatitis. And let us see what the question was asking us. So, the question was asking the management, which of the following statement is wrong regarding this case. Let us discuss this with surgery, sir, right? Dr. Rajamanan, sir, would explain you what should be the right approach to this answer. So, at the end of the discussion from you, I could come to a conclusion. I am dealing with a severe acute pancreatitis case, which has a mortality around 30 percent. So, it sh I should be very serious with dealing with this case. So, which is wrong regarding this case? Nasogastric feeding is started. I have to discuss about the feeding now. Nasogastric feeding is not started for severe acute pancreatitis. CT scan must have been done at 72 hours is correct. It would have been done 72 hours or afterwards so that we can come to a conclusion whether it is a necrotizing or an interstitial pancreatitis. World of pancreatic necrosis is the complication that arises after 4 weeks is true. So, minimally invasive surgery, MIS is done for this problem in a step up approach. That is very correct answer. We have to go in a minimally invasive approach. So, let me discuss about the nutrition related to severe acute pancreatitis. So, in a severe acute pancreatitis, please remember the type of nutrition I should go. There are three types of nutrition, NG, NJ, TPN. So, NG feeding, Bailey says very clearly a line, NG feeding is the best for acute pancreatitis which are mild to moderate cases, not for severe. Please don't forget this. For mild to moderate cases, nasogastric feeding is best because they have a normal BP, their GIT is good, so they should go for a nasogastric feeding. What is the indication of nasojejunal? When the patient is unable to tolerate, so unable to tolerate a nasojejunal gastric feeding and having vomiting, such times we go for a nasojejunal, but it is also for mild to moderate. So, please remember, enteral feeding is contraindicated in patients with severe acute pancreatitis. So, severe acute pancreatitis, the gold standard nutrition is TPN because patient is already in shock. He will be having very low BP. If you give enteral nutrition, patient may develop mesenteric ischemia. So, we should go for a TPN in this case of severe acute pancreatitis. So, this patient will be getting very worse because of multi-organ dysfunction. Patient is having necrosis everywhere with a collection. So, I should now deal this case in a step-up approach. What is this step-up approach? Again, I need the help of a radiologist. They will come and do the first step in this case is to put a percutaneous drainage and drain the collection. Please remember, we will put a PCD and drain the collection. That is the first step. It is a minimally invasive, just done with a local anesthesia. We can drain the pus. So, second step will be so, through the PCD tract, if the necrosis is not fully coming, I will form a small opening and I will pass the nephroscope. I will pass the nephroscope and remove the debris and the necrosis known as ward, known as 
video assisted retroperitoneal debridement known as ward that is the second step then the third step if there are still necrosis and debris i have to go for a open necrosectomy that will be the last option so this is known as step up approach i'll go from a minimally invasive method to a maximally invasive method so that the patient will be withstanding the stress in a case of acute pancreatitis let me show you the images of those minimally invasive procedures now so please remember this is a PCD done for a pancreatic necrosis by the radiologist. They have done a PCD for a necrotic case here. So this is a step one, but it will not completely remove all the necrotic materials. We have to go for a necrosectomy like this. This is a necrosectomy done, which is done with the help of a picture. This is a video showing you. There's a video showing you the necrosectomy being done by a ward video assisted retroperitoneal debridement. You can see we are removing the necrotic pancreas. You should very carefully remove the necrotic pancreas. There may be injury to the major vessels can happen, but we should carefully remove the dead tissues which are coming freely. So this is video assisted retroperitoneal debridement known as minimally invasive. And you can see this is a video showing you a necrosectomy. We are doing a necrosectomy. So you can see I have opened the uh, posterior abdominal wall and I am directly going inside and sucking out all the pus and the necrotic materials and I will keep a drain for washing the necrosis. So this is a, a necrosectomy, open necrosectomy. So from this question you can come to a conclusion which is the wrong answer. It is a very simple straightforward neat PG level next level question. So the answer for this question will be nasogastric feeding is started is wrong because this is a case of severe acute pancreatitis. We should not start a nasogastric feeding. We should only go for a TPN. Okay. So, walled off pancreatic necrosis is seen after 4 weeks is correct. CT scan must be done at 40 to 72 hours or later. MIS is done for this problem in a step up approach is correct answer. So, answer is A. That completes the discussion of an integrated surgery and radiology question. We will go to the next question. Thank you.